We are Daniel and Laura, and this is Behind the Message, the podcast. That's a lot of energy. Let's go. So in Behind the Message, what we try to do is to focus on the ponder, the praying, the practice around God's Word. And so it's getting us to think more regularly and talk more efficiently about the things of God. And so uh, we've been in the text. We've been in Ephesians chapter 4. We're up to verse 15. Laura, read verse 15, 16, and we'll jump in. Yeah. Well, so remember, you have uh, kind of this charge toward maturity for the Jesus follower, and you have the consequence, we talked about it last week, of being tossed to and fro. So it says, don't be tossed to and fro. And then verse 15, rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So I have a question. All right. Uh, this is this is a really high level question. High level all right. Question. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we talk about this a lot. Uh, speaking the truth in love. We say that it's kind of a phrase we throw around. What what is truth, and what does it mean to speak it? <laughs> what what's truth? Simple question. Never it's very high level. Yeah, 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 right. All right. So before I answer that question, though, I want to go back to something that you read. I want to tell a story. So. Uh, we've been talking again about the gifts of the body, how the body is built up, and Christ is the head of the body. And we understand, like, like, like that's that's the body. There, is, I mean, there is no life apart from the head, right? So it's there. Sure. So anyway, Lena was like, I don't know, maybe two or three, and she's in the. Is preschool. this the Goliath story? It is. <laughs> it is. And so she's back in preschool with all these other cute little, like, sweet. Like Small children, ones. two and three year old, <laughs> and they're doing the story of David and Goliath, and it gets to the part where David kills Goliath with the slingshot, and all the kids are like, "It's yeah. where the story ends, right?" And the story ended, except not for Lena. Lena raises her hand, and in the audience of all the two and three year olds, goes, "That's not how it ends." David then gets his sword and he cuts off Goliath's head, and. The kids start crying. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a whole thing. Anyway. As a parenting, teacher in that moment, you're like, hey. I know, I know. But for me, uh, parent went. I, that has really nothing to do with anything. But uh, You can't have a body without a head. That's it. At least that's alive. That's it. So that made me think of that. Okay, so truth. When we talk about truth, we know truth because truth is revealed to us um, through the revelation of God. The truth we know is made known through him. Even the universe, even as we look out, is a revealed truth created by God. And so we are the creation. We learn from the creator. Now, again, we can see that even in his creation, in one another, in the universe, the things that are around us. Our most absolute source of truth is God's word. And so as we have that, it teaches us who God is, and who he's called us to be. So when we read something like speak the truth in love, I mean, there's a measure of that, which is like don't bear false witness, that kind of a thing about everyday activity. But that's not really what's happening here. We're talking about building up the church. So we are talking specifically about the revealed truth of who God is and who he has called us to be. We are talking about the gospel of Jesus. And so this truth is revealed in God's word, and we are commanded to speak it. We see that in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, right? So we go out in Christ, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. And so, again, that all kind of corresponds to what we talked about last week with the full stature of Christ. Mm -hmm. So this truth isn't just you going out and telling somebody a true thing about what you ate for breakfast that morning. That's not it. This truth is the very revelation of who God is. It is that apart from him, you are dead in your sin. But through his grace, he sends his son to take the penalty for your sin that by faith in him, you might be redeemed uh, and have life in him. And so when we're talking about truth, understand we're not just talking about... um, a fact. Yeah. 
although it will be that. It is the very revelation of who God is. Well, so you have... And speaking means saying it. It doesn't mean like I wear it on my t-shirt. I mean, that's part of it. We do give testimony in our life, but scriptures are clear. We're called to be ambassadors that speak, Mm -hmm. that verbalize truth. We talked about that a few weeks ago as well. Well, so I think uh, I'm going to make an assumption on kind of where I think most people are at. And I would put myself in this category like it. Sometimes speaking truth is don't bear false witness. Like you're teaching maybe a new believer, maybe maybe your kid. Uh, these this is what God's word says, and it is very uh, just almost like fact based. But we have the context of like all maturity. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, which is uh, so much broader and so much more holistic. So a lot of times when we're looking at the people around us, we're observing where they're at, and we see an area that they need to grow, it's not quite as simple as, hey, God's word says, thou shalt not, right. or do this. It's, it's a lot bigger than that. And so what does it look like to speak truth when truth is all of what God has revealed. Right, so go back to last week. So I got some questions about this people talked about. So last week I used the expression of, as one of those deceitful schemes, like happy wife, happy life, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I mentioned that, you know, there is a measure of this kind of like partial thing that things might seem to go smoother on the front end. But the reality is my role as a husband is one who leads, not just by taking the remote of the TV and say, we're watching football. That doesn't go over well in my house, maybe for you guys. But that's not really the leadership I'm called to. The leadership I'm called to is defined by edification into Christ's likeness. In other words, it is my responsibility to lead my family to a deeper understanding of who God is and who he's called them to be, to grow them up in Christ. In everything. I mean, it's a part of that. I feed that. That's where my leadership is. Um, And so to that point, then Amy's happiness and just her emotional happiness is not my primary goal. My primary goal is for her growth. Well, that changes a lot. So think about if you said to your two-year-old that my two-year-old's happiness is my primary goal. Mm -hmm. You are in trouble. Like, That is not going to work. And that same dynamic would break down in our home. And so that's understanding the truth revealed in God's word, who he is, who he's called us to be, and speaking that into everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so you have this deceptive kind of, you called it slippery last week, I think, this deceitful scheme that's here. And in and of itself, it may not seem like a big deal, but it's reinforcing a lie. My job is to speak truth that would build up into Christ's likeness, not reaffirm that kind of worldly lie that deceptively hurts, like yeah. we talked about. Well, time. so you, you said, which I love this, it, it, we speak this, speak truth throughout kind of everyday life. Last week you talked about our tendency to wait, uh, and I think that gets us in so much trouble. Um, but in a different way than we were talking about last week, a lot of times we wait and we we build the thing up in our mind. Like, I see that you're doing this thing that maybe is not wise, uh, maybe is not just in line with, with the calling to which we've been called. And I'm like, man, I'm going to have to have a hard conversation with Daniel. And we, we build it up in our mind. And it's like, I'm waiting for this moment where I will speak truth. And... Uh-huh. It takes sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes it's like a year. We watch this thing and we're, we're giving benefit of the doubt. We're waiting like, oh, well, I'm sure that's not really what he meant to say, whatever. Well, this whole time it's just building up to where we have yeah. this like, oh, I have to speak truth. And right. it gets us so nervous. It, and so then we're just like, ah. That's right. That's right. That's exactly how it happens. It builds up. And so... One, our solution becomes the one time we're going to say the thing. Yeah. So think about you. How many times did you learn something because you heard it one time? Right. That, that hardly ever happens, right? There's a repetition. So we're not entering into a relationship for to build up. Mm-hmm. We're like going to just say the thing. And then because we've made it this big tension-like thing, when we approach saying it, it's not at all like, 
casual or everyday. <laughs> There's no just conversation. No. There's no talk about it. No, it, 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 it <laughs> It is a decree. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. Well, and then we're so nervous. Right. Like, and, and there's just, yeah. it's just, I now right. have to give you all of these things and we've built it up. And we use this phrase in church all the time, like hard conversations. We're going to have to have some hard conversations. And I think subtly that has kind of shifted the way we think about conversation and about speaking the truth in love and what it is to, to maintain and attain unity to we've turned it into confrontation. Everything that we would want well, to say like that, yeah. that is that is challenging, uh, that does does not leave you where you are, that calls you to grow, to be built up in love, it it becomes confrontation. And I, I think the point is that it doesn't have to be that way. No, it doesn't we have can to be just that be a people all. that speaks truth. Uh, so tell us, what does it look like then to do that in love? Yeah. So I love I love this like section of scripture and its definition it brings. So I thought you were going to say, I love love. No, like, no, that's I'm not, not that where we want to go. I'm not that cheesy. <laughs> okay. So so here's what I want you to think about. Ephesians chapter four gives you a contextual definition for love here as it's used. We've been talking about building up the body of Christ. This is the work of ministry. God has given us gifts to do this work so that the body of Christ is built up into the full stature of Christ. We don't get tossed to and fro. That would be bad. And so how do we do this? We speak truth in love to one another. Mm -hmm. Well, this in love isn't qualifying some kind of emotional response of the recipient or something. No, it's qualifying the act of building up into Christ's likeness. So I use the example with my wife. I am leading her to grow in Christ's likeness. And as I'm doing that, I am showing love because I am building her up uh, into her calling. That is the definition of love. And he goes on, he comes back to that at the end so that the body builds itself up in love. He circles back at this again later in the chapter as well. And so what you're seeing is love is edifying. (laughs) If you just speak truth, not for the purpose of edifying, that's not loving. If you speak truth for the purpose of building up in Christ, that's loving. You see the qualifier in the context? And that's so important. What we think, it's only loving if the recipient emotionally receives it and goes, that's what I wanted. But that's not the qualifier here. The qualifier here is, I spoke truth for the purpose Mm -hmm. and the really the intent and the work of building you up. If I did that, and that's my motive, and that's the pursuit, I am doing that thing yeah. in love. That is sacrificial commitment. Yeah. That is, as he said it in the beginning part of the chapter, enduring mm-hmm. with one another. Because now I'm stepping in, I'm leaning in, and maybe you don't like that. I mean, there's a reason he says endure with one another. Mm-hmm. Like, as we challenge one another, I mean, I'm not always immediately like, man, that's a really good word. Yeah. Sometimes I'm all irritated about yeah. it. So you get a really good definition of this in its context, and it's almost exactly opposite of that cultural thing mm-hmm. that you're speaking to, which is saying, well, if it's love, it's received immediately as kind or as gracious or whatever. No, if it's love, it's building up into mm-hmm. Christ Jesus, and in doing that, sometimes it can call for repentance mm-hmm. or admonishment or even conflict in that sense. Yeah. But the definition of love is about the direction in which it takes us, and in this case, toward our oneness in yeah. Jesus. I think we also, like, so that challenge is another thing. Sometimes we think that to speak the truth in love is to soften the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, and if we come at it with this, again, like kind of high tension, like really built up, like I have this thing I need to say to Daniel, to speak it in love, we think, is just to kind of bring it down a notch. And maybe just... Maybe not say all of the things. Maybe just make it quite not as big of a deal. But that is that's not what we're seeing that's here not either. What we're doing. The truth in love. It's you don't choose one or the other, uh, and it's also not love that softens truth because then it makes it not be true. And so you take speaking the truth, God given revelation, and in love with the goal and purpose of of edifying, mm-hmm. and you have the means by which we grow up into maturity as a church. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
there's so much there that you could unpack, and there's so much of a challenge that we try to excuse ourselves and redefine the terms. But you talk about that softening. I mean, Paul said, you were dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have nothing. Um, he doesn't say, well, you're, you're not as good as you could be. Yeah. No, you are dead in your sin. That's where he starts. And so uh, we see that type of teaching throughout Scripture. That is a cultural prideful thing in us that, mm-hmm. that wants that and then also that thinks that's effective, that somehow the gospel would be more effective if it is watered down and softened so it's not offensive. Yeah. But that's really not a New Testament concept. That's a cultural concept. And so we get ourselves in trouble, mm-hmm. I think, with that quite a bit as well. What do you think for just like the just the average person in our church, average church member kind of hearing these things for the first time, or maybe they've just been hearing it for their whole lives and now are kind of, they want to do the thing. So we want to practice. be doers of the word, not hearers. They want to practice. How do they, how do they start? What do they do? Yeah, I, I think in this case, you know, we mentioned the Great Commission. We teach them to observe everything Jesus has taught us. So here when we talk about building one another up, observe the people around you, take note of where they're at, identify a way that Mm -hmm. you think they can grow. Again, don't feel like you have to wait on some grand revelation. Just speak truth and try to come alongside of it and help. And you're trying. Everyone has a next step. I mean, we hold that out at Tri-Cities quite a bit, whether that's conversion and that's into saving faith, whether that's, man, just submission to some things that are I'm holding on to. Maybe it's just a devotion. Maybe it's replication and carrying that out. But there's just a really basic charge that we need to accept, which is go do the work. Mm -hmm. So go build up, speak to one another about these things. We so overbuild it in our mind. Just start talking about it every day. Speak truth and call people to respond to that. Mm -hmm. And that's not, I mean... It's really not as confrontational as we build it up in our mind. It really is loving Mm -hmm. because everything in your worldview that you would proclaim would say that apart from Jesus, there is nothing, but in him there is every spiritual blessing. He has called you and set you apart and is sanctifying you and bringing you into a oneness with him day over day, you're experiencing more and more of that. Is that not what you long for? Mm -hmm. And any authentic Jesus follower, they want that same thing. And so that's why it's loving to come alongside them and do that work to build them up. But you can't do that if you're quiet. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to speak. And so this week, that's my prayer for you guys. You go out practice. You would teach. You would make disciples. um, And start having some of those conversations. And just try. Uh, And I think I'd like to be part of a church that just constantly growing more and more into that where the culture of that becomes normal final word nope that's pretty much it it's good (laughs) stuff so remember uh next week we're going to be answering some of your questions so we have a collection of them uh we're going to answer some good ones and we're going to answer some less than good ones is that softening that a little bit? Is I that, that, that. that softening <laughs> that. that is. So send us your questions, btm at tcbchurch.org, and we will see you next week. <laughs>